What is going on YouTube? Dr. Way here, another video, and I'm going to try not to make this a rant, but I, I really want to do character-specific guides, and I wanted to start with a, my favorite character, which is Charles Martel. Like, I like everything he does, like literally everything. I just wish he wasn't a gold key commander, so I would feel good about investing my universes into him, but I, I mean... He does just so much stuff, right? He he's a tank. He can actually lead rallies. Um, good infantry commander. He's one of the only infantry commanders that has march speed. Although you have to expertise him to get it, he does have it. Twenty percent of it too, which is a, a really really strong number, all things considered, right? So like, let's see. Where do I start? Let let's just talk about his skills, what he does, you know, and the different applications that you, how you can use them, right? So, he basically has this thing where he has a shield that will literally ignore damage. It'll last for four seconds, and then you get a damage bonus for four seconds. Now, some people think that you only get the damage bonus as long as the shield is active, but that's not true. Even though the shield will get melted, right, in maybe one or two turns, one or two seconds, you get the damage bonus for a full four seconds, no matter what. So you get the increased damage for four seconds, and then you gain a shield also for four seconds. But it only absorbs X amount of damage, which usually gets absorbed within that first one or two seconds of, of the, the next turns after the shield is active. Okay, boom. Now... You guys might not understand this, but if you get defense and health, defense and health, health is the most important stat on the game out of health, defense, and attack. So how it works is, is that there's diminishing returns on your stats. And because it's easier to find attack and defense stats, mainly attack stats, right, increases, um, it's good to have health because the health percentages are going to be more effective, right, than if this was like defense and attack, right? Defense and health is like literally what you want, and you'll get way better trades having more health than you will attack, and, and defense is kind of like in the middle, right? So you might not do as much damage, but the trade that you're getting with how many troops you lost versus how many troops they lost would be better with more health now. The same thing goes, like, if you stack a whole bunch of health, which is really hard to do, I mean, sometimes attack would be better, depending on um, what your stats are, right? So, let me see if I can illustrate that concept real quick. So, like, let's look at a, re if I can look at a report. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter who's, you know, you go to troop buffs, right? You will notice that that health is almost always the lowest stat, right? So in this case, the best stat to increase is health for infantry, cavalry, and archers, because he, they, most people have more of the other stats, especially the attack, right? So there you go. That's why you would want to. That's why I like the health as opposed to the attack. So again, that goes for any character, really. So you're getting, you know, 15% of the stats, and it's the good stats, right, that you want. Um, he also increases garrison attack uh, when you're leading a garrison of your own city, right? You get uh, increased attack. Now, I'm pretty sure that this doesn't count for um, flag defense, but I would still use them for flag defense, quite honestly. Um, so a lot of people, what they do is they put like a Sun Tzu Charles Martel on their wall. I think that's a really good thing to do. A hundred percent. You see, I have it right on my wall. Okay. And then his last ability, he increases counterattack damage. So how it works is that, um, there's three different types of damage you can do. You can do normal attack damage. Which is when you're actively hitting one person, you can only do normal attack damage to one person. Then you do counter attack damage. So anybody that hits you, they take your counter attack damage. And then you can do skill damage, right? Which is the damage that comes from an active skill. Charles Martel does not have active skill damage, but someone like, let's say, Lancelot, he does have 
active so skill damage, right? Because his active skill does direct damage factor. All right, perfect. We cruising along here. Where's, where's Mr. Martel? Back to Martel. Okay, so counterattack damage is really good for when you're getting hit by multiple people because let's say I increase normal attack damage. Well, that's only good if I'm attacking one target, right? But if I increase my counterattack damage, right, I'm increasing the damage that I deal no matter how many people are hitting me, right? So it's way more valuable when you're getting swarmed. Really, and it's significant as damage, right? I'm not kidding you. Now, if you are a lucky, lucky boy or girl, for that matter, and you end up getting Martel expertise, you'll get five percent uh, more stats for health and defense, ten percent more stats total, and then this is nutty, dude. Twenty percent increased march speed. Oh my goodness, right? So that's most applicable in the open field, and that's why I think. Martel is so good uh, in the open field, and he can fill like a variety of roles, right? Because this kid is very versatile. Like, obviously, he's infantry focused, but um, you know, being a tank and getting a damage bonus that's very general. That can work with almost anything. And then the counterattack damage is anti swarm, right? So, where 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 do I think he's good? He's good in the open field. He's still good in the garrison, um, and then he's going to also be uh, good at, at, at rallying. So rally, open field, and, and uh, defending your city, or really an object, any objective for that matter. Okay, so I guess for most people, rallying uh, and defending isn't what you're going to be doing. So you're going to be doing mainly open field uh, with Martel, and we are going to a build and then talk about some pairing. Right. So for the, the strategy that I would go for for the open field, right, is that you want to put somebody that has active skill damage behind Martel because um, they'll get the active skill damage you get, you know, Boosted by his damage bonus if Mar Mar Martel is the primary, right? And I think Martel primary is, in general, um, the better idea in most cases. Um, I'm not running him primary in my city defense, but that I, I would if I had him leveled up enough. Let's put it that way, right? So, who I think would work with him, and then I'll get into the talents later. Like, Sun Tzu is an obvious choice. That's a pretty natural carry. Um, honestly, anybody that does active skill damage, especially AoE for the open field, I'm more looking for AoE. You can hide an Ethel flag right behind uh, a Charles Martel, but I don't think that's the best. I wouldn't do, like, a single target damage or split people that care about Calvary or anything like that. Richard is fine. I would actually make Richard primary in that case because it's a micro-optimization where... Richard heals, and then your shield is worth more. Um, but again, he doesn't have a uh, active active skill that does damage. But I mean, it's a, it's a very tanky ass pairing. And then if you got him expertise, you give you're giving Richard March speed, and you're even um, really honing in on the uh, extra infantry stats. Um, who else we got here? Uh, I wouldn't do Mulan. I would reserve that for Richard. I guess Charles Martel or Uji is fine. There's not a lot of options in the early game. I'm thinking about early game options, right? There's not a lot of uh, options for the early game. In the open field, I'm inclined to pair him with Sun Tzu, for sure. Right? I would pair him with Ethel Flag. That's fine. And then I would be leaning towards uh, Richard or Uji for the early game. Those, those all seem like uh, pretty good pairings. I like Charles Martel as the uh, primary for all of those besides for the Richard. I think Richard should be primary in that case. And then we'll talk about talents for the open field. And yeah, so I'm going to have to put this up because he's not high enough level. So... Honestly, this right here is pretty pretty good place to start. 
Um, you actually don't have to get even more talent points than this. The idea is, is that you're um, utilizing the defense tree to be very tanky. Burning blood is really, really good, especially if you're getting swarmed. Do not swarm Charles Martel. It's six rage for every person that attacks him. So if you got three people attacking him, he's doing all that counterattack damage and he's getting all this rage. Don't do it. You can increase your defense. Um, so you really are rewarded for trying to star up um, a Martel if you go for this. This is the only place you can get March speed in the defense tree, and I think that it's worth it to be faster. Do not underestimate March speed. It's very important. Then you get uh, no weakness, which reduces all damage taken, which is normal attacks, counterattacks, and skill damage. You uh, get more counterattack damage, which is what Martel is already doing anyway. Um, and then you go down and you take 9% less skill damage. So tanky as hell, right? You can go farther in the tree. If, like, for example, if you're going, like, Richard or something like that as a, you know, primary, like, you could, let's say Charles Martel was still the primary, you could get this if you know you're going to have healing. It doesn't necessarily have to be Richard per se. Um, then after that, let me show you on, once you get that part done, right, I would focus on the, the infantry tree. So, the majority, you want the march speed in the open field, and the majority of the march speed is on the right side of the tree. So, you know, I would definitely be looking to get, you know, this march speed here, this march speed there, this march speed here. Um, after I get the march speed, you know, I really, I'm not really a fan of slowing down the opponents because, yeah, you slow them down, you know, a little bit. 20% is pretty significant, but I, I don't think it's reliable enough to, like, really catch somebody, right? So, I think it's better to go on this other side once you get uh, the march speed. Um, some notable talents, I think, is uh, the stronger body. 6% infantry, I already said, health is the best stat. And then if you were to bring full infantry, which you would be doing if you, you know, are doing this type of a thing, um... You would bring uh, all infantry, and then you'll be a lot more tanky. Where you'll have a chance to reduce, you know, all your damage taken by 20% for the next two seconds. That shit is serious. So it, it comes out to like you get 2% reduced damage taken for two. You know, it, it, it's good. Um, and then uh, that's that's the build I would do. I don't know how many points you um would have left, but it's definitely worth um eventually getting this and you know, just to get the elite soldiers because it's going to be a two and a half percent of each stat which comes out to seven and a half percent of stats that that shit's good two and a half percent of stats for five points is crazy that's really good another noteworthy thing is like this helps you with the rage gen right your normal attack so when you attack somebody else you get nine rage somebody att is attacking you so when you're attacking somebody, you're getting 9 plus 6, 15 rage a second. If more people attack you, you'll get more, even more rage per second. And then, like, if you're going against cavalry, which you usually are, right? That's why a lot of people go infantry. That's an extra 9% damage right off the top. And, and that and that will destroy, right? That destroys the, uh, the cavalry. This is a great build, right? Even if you just did something like this. And then you did what I was telling you to do in terms of the defense tree. Really good build for the open field. Most people can just stop there because they're not going to rally or defend something. But I guess the next most widespread use is maybe on your wall. So I would do, I would start here. So like. This is minus 15% skill damage, all damage dealt increased, damage reduced by 6%, and then every time your city is attacked, you get rage. Like, the rage regen in the garrison is remarkably a lot, like a whole lot, right? And it gets worse if they swarm you. Oh my god, do not swarm a martel. That's so much rage, okay? So I would start there, and then after that... Because you have multiple troop types, I would work on the defense tree, and I would get, you know, all of this. I would drop the march speed, because that, that's not, um, the march speed isn't relevant. 
right in, in the um, garrison. So I wouldn't get the march speed, but I would get all of these uh, same talents, right? All of the same talents minus the uh, two march speed points. And then after that, after that, I would focus uh, on getting. This, uh, the Undying Fury from more Rage Regen in the City Defense. Uh, you know, in the early game, I could, I could recommend getting, um, the Damage to Calvary. A lot of people will be, um, hitting your city probably with calves, maybe. But if you wanted to go in a more general sense, I think getting, um, Call of the Pack is good. Cause that's a, just generally good. Right, if you had any points left over, uh, you could just get uh, increase your normal attack damage. Right, like something like that. That's fine. If you had more points, I don't know how many points you'll end up getting. Maybe if you, since you're on, might be infantry focused, you might go to stronger body because you have a lot of infantry troops in your city. If not, you can get this. It's fine. And that, and that's what your uh, build would look like. I know I'm all over the place. And I can't show you all on one. I apologize for that. Maybe I, I, I should just hop on my other account. Because cause then I could show you. I'm so stupid. Okay. So. Now let's talk about. Objectives. So when you're defending an objective. It depends on what type of objective. You, I already covered the city. And the garrison build is a little bit different. Right, so okay, let's reset. Okay, so with Martel, what I would do is you definitely want to get impregnable, right, to reduce the skill damage taken by quite a bit. And then this, this doesn't, this only counts for city, so you don't want that, right? And uh, if you wanted to work your way down the tree. You know, if you're since you're defending a, a stronghold garrison, which is like a flag or um, or a structure, any structure, you know, you could go down and get this. That's like hella worth. That's a um, a lot of stats. That's you know, nine percent of stats for three points. Now, you ain't getting getting no use uh, from from this, but that, that's okay because it made this nine percent of stats for three points is insane, right? And that's and that, that's like a pretty good uh, build. Now some people will go on this side and get no thy enemy because it'll reduce all damage by nine percent if you're getting uh, swarmed. So if more than one person is attacking you, so if you get double rally, like that re automatically reduces how much damage you're taking by nine percent. So if you know that the double rally is probably going to come, or you know you're going to get swarmed. This is a pretty uh, compelling uh, talent to get. Okay. Um, and then after that, because it's still, you know, you... Ideally, you would probably um, bring all infantry. But I'm still compelled to get a lot of the talents in the defense tree. The main, the main one I want to get is the, the loose formations. And depending on how much you invest over here, you know, will determine, you know, what you can get on this side. So, like, at the very least for uh, the defense of an objective, you want to at least get that. Right? And, and some people stop there, right? Um, and, that, and that's totally fine. That's, that's a fine build. Some people opt to get... Know thy enemy. Some people opt to get the king's guard. Some people do both. Right? Um, and, that, and that's totally fine. I would definitely get the loose formation. That skill damage. If you, Because most people have some type of skill damage build. There, Attila Takeda doesn't have that. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Because that's so far away. I'm in my kingdom's life. Uh, you can also, you know, increase your uh, rage gen. That's like totally fine. And then you can uh, get no weakness and the master armor. Basically the same thing that I had got before in the uh, other thing. And then if there's any more points left, you can just go to like Undying Fury. And then finish it off with Call of the Pack. That's a good objective build.
Okay? Now, let's talk about why you would uh, rally with Charles Martel. So, in an early game, you know, you might not have the biggest rally. You know, so people... If they pop an army expansion and it's a good enough player that doesn't mind taking the heavy losses, they can swarm your rally and try to like beat it down real quick before you can really get a lot of damage in because like the, the flag itself still has a lot of troops. The, the rally starts losing pretty bad. So Charles Martel can act as a really good deterrent from that because you try to swarm Martel, he's going to do an insane amount of counterattack damage to you. And he's going to regenerate a whole bunch of rage, right? So that's why you might want to use him as a rally leader. Who would you pair? This would be in like a KVK most likely. Who would you pair um, with him? You could uh, pair Freddy if you were hitting, if you were hitting a city. But um, let's, I'm going to assume that you're going to uh, do objectives. I think the most relevant... A uh, person would probably be the YSG. Charles Martel YSG is uh, a rally that I, I, I would not swarm it. Oh my god. And then it YSG also hones in on the fact that um, he has a... Uh, once you expertise him, he has a circle around him, right? And you really want to get this expertise. Um, YSG gives some more rage regen. And Charles Martel will increase YSG's damage, right? So that's a, a rally that won't really get swarmed. And it still does an insane amount of damage. It has a good punch. It would still bring all, all infantry because uh, Isong will be a secondary. But it's not a big deal that you're missing out on half of half of a skill, right? Only half of this skill here cares, cares about archers. Everything else doesn't. And, you know, you don't get the skill damage bonus on, you know, Martel, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's still a great combo. And Charles Martel, YSG, I think, is the second best rally combo you can do uh, on an objective KVK1. I, I, it really is, I think, the second best, right? Uh, the, the best, I think, would be the LC at YSG. I think that's, like, the best, but... If this is if this is what you got, then I'll, I'll promise you it's fine, and you're not gonna get swarmed, a hundred percent. If they swarm you, they're 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 slow. They they're just slow, cause they don't understand how the game mechanics work. That's what that would mean to me, right? So um, he can do it all. He's my favorite character. I and mean, went over in the rally build is essentially pretty much. Just the open field build, but you don't go for the march speed. Let me show you what that looks like. You would get all the same talents that I've been saying here, minus the march speed. You don't get the march speed, right? You get all these talents first. And then you bring all infantry. Let's see. In fact, the first thing I would do if you were going to rally, you probably want to be level 60. And I would honestly just get elite soldiers. I would get stronger body. Don't get fleet of foot. So let me show you actually what that would look like. I'm tweaking with you. You would still get a lot of the defensive talents, but you really want to go all in on a um, all infantry plan with that type of thing. So you would get like you would go all the way here. I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. Go here. This is this is just for August, pretty much. And you get stronger body. And even though like this march speed here isn't relevant, these are only points that aren't relevant. All right, boom, you get that. And then you would go to the defense tree. Right, and then you would try to get. Ooh, don't reset. Reset. You would try to get as many points as you can. I would start with Burning Blood. Would we'll definitely get uh, Master Armor. And then I would try to make my way down to Loose Formation. Right? And if you have any points left, get No Weakness. And then if, that, if there's any more points, then it's all on you. Like, do, do what you want to do. 
um, right? Don't go for any March speed. Like, don't go for that March speed. That doesn't matter. That's what I would do. So, all the way, all the way into the uh, elite soldiers, stronger body. Go over and get these talents here, right? Perfect. That that'll be a great uh, rally build. Tanky as hell, and you'll still do tons of damage with Esong as a secondary. And it's a nice balance between tankiness and damage. And you don't got to worry about getting swarmed at all. So if you're worried about swarms, Martel is a good rally leader for that. Um, obviously good in the open field to tank. You can hide some commanders behind them that do debuffs or a lot of AoE damage. You could put them um, to defend uh, structures, especially if the structure might get swarmed, right? It'll be even better. Martel, Mr. Martel, my favorite character. See you in the next video.